What's happening, Airsofters? Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the DITAC Mini Tracer here. And although it is DITAC, it is in collaboration with x -Cortec. So it's important that you understand that today's video is about talking. We are going to be talking about this Mini Tracer more than anything, rather than showing you anything else. As you can see, it comes in this box. Now, the Tracer itself is marketed by DITAC. If those of you who don't know, the company is called Dynamic Tactical. They are a company based in Hong Kong. And recently, they have really been storming the sea by bringing out really good innovative products. This is the box it comes in, that's exactly what you get, nothing else. This came in a little plastic bag inside there, but you don't get any instructions. And that is because the instruction manual is online. I'm pretty sure everyone interested in this product has access to the instruction manual. So let's talk about the internals of this mini tracer unit first. I'm just gonna unscrew it here. And as you can see the internals there, as most of you know, this is the x Cortec. XT301 tracer unit, which comes installed in here. The original x Cortec XT301 unit comes with a tracer housing unit, very similar to this one, except it kind of cuts off and then it has a little extension on the end there, and that allows you to thread it onto your counterclockwise 14 millimeter threads. What DITEC or Dynamic Tactical has done is collaborate with x Cortec to create these metal housings of different shapes and different colors so you have a choice of what your tracer unit looks like. We think this is very innovative because it gives you a very, very small package and a very nice tracer unit with brilliant internals but you have a choice of what your tracer unit looks like. Originally, the classic design for tracer units are usually very big, very thick and black silencer, stroke, suppressor type units that thread onto the front and run off alkali batteries. This one in question is a Tokyo Marui tracer unit, the version 2 or Gen 2. And to replace the batteries, all you do is unscrew this unit here, take off the cap, and there is a battery compartment which takes four AAA batteries. The problem with alkaline batteries is they're known to leak, so if you were to install four batteries in here, over time they could leak some battery fluid into the tracer unit, thus damaging it. This meant you had to keep buying batteries, and every time you finished playing with the tracer unit, you had to uninstall the batteries, and every time you went to play with the unit, you had to reinstall the batteries, which means you had to store the batteries somewhere else. Well, there's not really any problem with that, except when you need new batteries, you have to pop to the store and physically buy four AAA batteries unless you went with four nickel metal hydride AAA batteries and put them on charge, which usually takes about six to 12 hours and you had to look after them. The good thing about the x Cortec XT301 is it is fully rechargeable, meaning you never have to uninstall the battery and all you have to do is give it a top up charge every three months or so. The type of cell they're using is a lithium polymer type, which gives them the advantage of having very good capacity, high power output, incredibly small footprint and being very, very light. And when the batteries are installed, it'll be half the weight as well. This makes it possible for us to do things that we were never able to do before, like install these on pistols with a threaded outer barrel. And it would function correctly and yet not upset the balance of the pistol. The main purpose of this video is to run through the functions of this as very recently we were in a shop and there were people trying to run through the functions of this tracer unit and they were having trouble. They were saying that the instruction manual was a little bit hard to understand. We could understand that the layout is a little bit confusing. So what we're going to do today is to run through all the functions and tell you how to set them and what the blinking light means. If you think that's very boring, skip to the end of this video where we'll just show you the tracer unit in motion. Do bear in mind though that we only have one airsoft rifle at the moment and that's the one we're going to be using this on which is a bolt action rifle so there will be no auto fire testing but we will show those who are interested what it looks like when you're firing BBs through this that glow up. If you're wondering what that little set screw is there, that's the locking set screw for when it's installed onto the outer barrel. Traditionally, you would thread these counterclockwise onto your outer barrel and use friction to hold it in place so you'd have to tighten it on really tight. The problem with that is sometimes you didn't tighten it enough and it would come undone. DITAC has realized this, so they put a set screw there. So not only can you set the orientation you want it in, like say if you wanted it square on on your barrel and it was slightly moved to the side, all you have to do is add an O-ring and make it squish on roughly into the correct straight orientation that you desire and then tighten up that set screw. We're now gonna run through the functions of this so that you understand. Those of you who can't find the link to the instruction manual, the link is in the description there. All you have to do is click on it. Those of you who can't be bothered to click on the link and reload a web page, here's a quick screenshot. If you didn't capture that, all you needed to do was pause the video at that point, duh. So first of all, you're gonna to need to turn the unit on and all you do is push that button and it'll come on. As you can see, it will blink. 
it is blinking twice and what that means is the power mode that I have selected. Don't worry about that yet, you do not know what I'm talking about but we'll run through it. So to enter the settings menu all you do is hold on to this for five seconds and then release and that should blink. How many times it blinks will tell you what setting you're in. This is blinking once which tells me that it is in brightness adjustment mode. To continue to brightness adjustment mode, you hold again for another five seconds. And when you release, it will tell you how bright it is. As you can see, the little green light there is blinking four times. That means the brightness is on maximum. There are four brightness settings. If it blinks once, you're in eco mode, whatever that means. If it blinks twice, you're in low mode. If it blinks three times, you're in medium mode. And if it blinks four times like it's doing now, it is in high mode or the highest mode. To select the mode, all you do is short click it. So I will click it once. It is now blinking once, which is in eco mode. Short click again, blinking twice. Short click again, now it's in medium mode three times. Short click again four times and it is in maximum or high mode. If I press and hold the button now for five seconds, it will memorize the settings I have put for brightness and then go back to original function. and it is now blinking twice, indicating the power mode I'm in, and also indicating normal function. To turn off, all you do is push your button again, and it will blink three times, and the ultraviolet LED will quickly blink once. I'll show you that again. If I turn it on, it's just gonna blink twice to show me my power mode. If I turn it off, it will blink, 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 and then do a UV flash. We're now going to show you the power setting menu, also known as APO, which stands for Auto Power Off. To enter the Auto Power Off settings, all you do is first turn on the tracer unit, then you hold the power button for five seconds as if you were to enter brightness mode. And it is blinking red once. This is to indicate, as we said just a minute ago, that you are in brightness adjustment setting. Short press once to enter APO or auto power off settings. And as you can see, it is blinking twice, meaning it is in that setting. You then long press to physically enter the setting. And after five seconds, it should tell you the power setting you're in. So we're in mode two. There are three power settings, mode one, mode two, mode three. In mode one, if you don't move it for 110 seconds or almost two minutes, it will automatically turn off. Or if you press the button, it will also turn off. But if you move it, it will come back on. So if, if I was in mode one and I left it for two minutes, it would automatically turn off. If I pick it up or move my rifle or gun, it will automatically come back on. And here's a really cool feature of mode number one is that if it turns off via the timer, so 110 seconds and you don't touch it and it turns off, it will turn on if it detects any motion. That's if you pick it up, if you move it or whatever you're doing. Now you're probably thinking that that mode is absolutely useless because if you have it in your bag, it will keep turning on when you're transporting it. Well, here's the really good programming that's gone into that mode. If you turn it off via the button, it won't turn on via motion. So it will have a motion sensor and it will have automatic turn off. But if you manually turn it off, even in that mode, it will not turn on via motion, which is a really cool feature in our opinion. In mode two, there is no motion sensor setting. So if it is turned off, you can move it, but it will not turn on. If you don't take a shot in 15 minutes, the unit will automatically turn off or if you push the power button, it will turn off also. So just to be absolutely clear, in mode two, it can only be turned on via the button and it will only turn off automatically if you don't shoot your rifle or pistol for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes of no shooting, it will automatically turn off. Or if you just push the button, it will also turn off but it will not turn on if you move it, no motion sensor. And the third and final mode of this tracer unit it's just the power button on and off, which means there is no motion sensor, there is no timer, it is all controlled by you. So like a classic tracer unit, you have full control. Turn on, always on, turn off, always off. We don't use mode three because if we forget to turn it off, it will just chew through the battery. And leaving a lithium polymer battery depleted for an extended period of time is not good. So we have selected mode two. As you can see there, it is blinking twice. To switch modes, all you do is short click the button. So it's mode two, two bleeps, 
push the button, should be mode three. One, two, three. Push the button again, it goes to mode one. Push the button again, and it will go in mode two. Hold the button to remember the setting. And now it should blink twice to tell us we're in mode two. Push the button again to turn off. So that was the very quick overview of this tracer unit. Those of you that are wondering how this unit performs, we can tell you by our eyes that it illuminates each BB better than the Tokyo Marui one. We can't capture this, of course, because our camera is a very low sensitive camera or it won't be able to capture on camera exactly the difference as you see with your eyes, but you can take our word from it. It is much better performing than the Tokyo Marui one. If you're wondering how you charge this, all you do is plug in a USB cable in the front there and plug it into a power source and it will charge. And of course it has the usual LED colors to show you exactly what state the battery's in. You have your red, low amber, high amber, and green. Those of you who are wondering about the color, on some web pages, because they used a lot of high flash photography when they were taking pictures of the product, the unit actually looked half silver, half bright silver. This is actually quite a true rendition, what you see here in this video, to what the Tracer unit actually looks like in person. It's a almost glittery, but not quite gray, but it is not silver, we wouldn't say. It is in between gray and silver, okay? But it's not bright silver, definitely. Now let's fire some BBs through this just to give you a quick view of what it looks like. I'm sure you guys know anyway, but just for fun, you came here to watch, right? Here we go.